when it comes to I hate you to death, <laughs> yes, the title is very uninspired. But I will say when it comes to Christopher B. Stokes and Marcus Houston, this feels like a film that's definitely in their wheelhouse, but it also shows their development as a writer and director team. So to summarize the film, Trevor is a handsome and charming man who probably with a decent amount of effort could get any woman he wanted, assuming they're not lesbian or just not into men. Yet, unfortunately for three ladies, Kelsey, Olivia, and Naomi, he gets greedy and on top of that he decides to marry each woman in the order that they were named. But to make matters worse, Trevor is a liar. He doesn't tell the ladies about each other and they all have different stories of some of which is true, most of which is not. And because of this, and a few other things that Trevor has planned, he ends up hanging off of a balcony in his boxes as the ladies seek out not only revenge, but for him to confess something that he was planning to do to all of them. So, getting to the review portion, the high for me is that this was probably one of the most entertaining things that came from Stokes and Houston's collaborations in the past. For there's a lot going on and there's a good amount of drama, but it never feels like it's everything in the kitchen sink. I mean, it's still very much on brand for them in terms of lies, cheating, and scandal, but it seems like they are starting to understand less is more and you don't need to do the most in order to get a reaction out of the audience and get them invested. For when it comes to two of the ladies, Kelsey and Olivia, I feel like that's where you see the most growth when it comes to those two in terms of what Stokes and Houston are able to present and develop. But when it comes to Kelsey, you're allowed to see the bill, the rise and the in a fall in her emotions as she realizes that her husband has been cheating on her. Never mind he has manipulated her into being a stay-at-home wife who wanted a kid but then he pushed that he didn't want one and then comes the drama of her getting an abortion, finding out about Olivia and Naomi and just... I'm not saying you're gonna be in such a swell of emotion you're gonna start getting teary-eyed but you recognize it's a lot for someone to go through in the way that things are handled. It feels like the actress wasn't expected to do the, be over the top, but instead really process her character's emotions. Then when you go into Olivia's situation where she had a string of bad relationships before Trevor, wasn't looking for someone yet Trevor won her over, and then she is going through so much in terms of reconciling the man that he presented himself as and a man that he is, again, it may not be enough to get you teary-eyed or like extra emotional, but it allows for the type of character development and performances that at one time you probably would never expect from Houston and a uh, Houston and Stokes movie. But with that said, while Olivia's giving good character development, while Kelsey's giving good character development, Naomi, Trevor's third wife, she's not given much of anything at all. I mean, like the first two wives, it's presented how exactly Trevor met her, but beyond that, it can feel like her presence was just so that there was skin tone diversity. Since Olivia and Kelsey are light skin, meanwhile, the only dark skinned woman I wanna say, especially in terms of a character for speaking role, is probably Naomi. And unfortunately, she doesn't really get to be more than that. Which leads to the on-defense topic. In order to develop these free ladies in their relationship with Trevor, there's a lot of time jumping. You can go back months and years, then back to the present, and that's done nearly every 10 to 15 minutes, to the point it can be a little bit drawing. And while, as a whole, you get what's happening, you get the full story, as you're watching, it can be a bit much and even a little bit irritating to a certain degree. But overall, when it comes to I Hate You to Death, it really shows that Stokes and Houston as a combo are maturing as filmmakers and with them not pushing over the top performances, scenarios and, and stuff like that, 
it really makes you wonder what may come next for the duo as they continue to grow. And I would even say, after watching quite a few of their productions, either together or else as individuals, I now find myself not just watching because, you know, I'm trying to figure out how over the top this is going to be, but really because I want to see what kind of story, performances, and even what actors they may recruit since. Now it's starting to seem like it's not just finding indie actors who are looking for a job, but people who may actually be worth following after the movie is over. 